Hi friends, Coach Gretchen here. We do have Coach Harriet that's with us that might make a little appearance as she scooters on by. You can see her helmet. Um, we are talking today about self-myofascial release, self-massage, and the benefits of this for everyone, not just like people training for a marathon or a triathlon. The benefits for everyone are numerous. It helps you feel, um, it just helps you feel better, but it also helps you with your range of motion, which can increase your quality of life. It helps you have less pain, um, more of a balanced workout. So that's a big thing. If we're starting to feel hip pain, if we've been doing the same workout over and over, especially things like running, right forward motion, we need to incorporate some of this uh, self myofascial release. I'm pretty impressed. She just walked under the tripod and it didn't even move. So if you see it bounce, this is happening. Um, it, you can incorporate some of this and just live pain free. So I'm here to give you the two things that you need tools and techniques in order to do this effectively on your own. Now, before we even get started with the whole video, I want to point out, this is not going to be one of those videos that you put on and you play and you um, do the workout along with. It's not going to be like that. This is going to be more of an educational video. Now, I understand if you're still learning and you might wanna pause it after each one and do the exercise and then keep going, but just be warned. I'm not gonna be you know, balancing everything. And second, here's something super cool about self myofascial release. Now, for years, you remember, every time we talk about flexibility, we always talk about doing it when? After the workout, because our muscles are warm, they're ready to be stretched. Well, we are not stretching muscles. We are not. We are helping the fascia, right? So this connective tissue that runs all through our body and over our muscles and um, can cause adhesions, right? Where our muscles like knots in the muscles where it gets a little bit tighter or dehydrated. We're just loosening that up so that our muscle can move freely. Different than stretching. So this can actually be done and has been shown to be effectively has shown to effectively increase performance when done before a workout. New, different, trust me, you're gonna love it. All right, let's talk tools. So my two favorites, if I just had to buy two things for self mind fascial release, it would be this foam roller and this little ball. Um, you actually don't need the spikes on the ball, I just have, happen to have this one handy. Actually, a lacrosse ball works really well, and you can buy them in a pack because they're a little bit harder, but they still have some give. Spiky balls are fine, but this might be a little bit more advanced if you're new to it because it can be a little bit more painful. Um, second would be just a longer foam roller. Now, I do like the longer ones. Why? Because it's about the length of my spine-ish, kind of. <laughs> and I can lay on it and do things like open my chest and just let that chest expansion happen because we know that's a place that we're usually really tight. So the long one is not necessary. I just like to use it for other things. So I do like to have a long roller. You can have um, this same roller, but half size and they have, this is kind of an option, right? This is about half the size. Um, this one has like little grooves in it, which is nice and can kind of get down into the muscles. Um, but again, maybe after you've been doing this for a while, this might be a tool that you add in to feel a little bit more deeply. You don't really need to have this contouring on it at all. You can just have a nice smooth foam roller. Now I do want to point out something. Hopefully you can see this. See how these are individual little cells versus just one big hunk of foam. This is going to help it last a little bit longer. So something that happens with our foam rollers, if we're using them regularly, is they start to kind of collapse in the middle. And maybe you've seen this, right? Like use it over and over and over and the foam starts to collapse. This one I have had for about six years, six years. And you can see it has done very little, if at all, collapsing. And we probably use the middle the most. So maybe a tiny bit but it's because it's made up of all those microcells. So even though it might be a little bit more expensive, did you find a potty in the garage? You did. Even though um, it might be a little bit more expensive, it's going to be the best bang for your buck. Now, some other things. So again, the ball and the, the roller are really all you need. Now, some other things that you might want. This is, and it's got like a moving part here and grippy parts here. 
This is great for travel. So you can, everything that we're gonna do with the foam roller, you can actually do by holding this and using it on the muscles, almost like a rolling pin. <laughs> and then we're gonna talk about microfibering in a minute. Um, but like these long rolls, and then when you microfiber, which we're gonna, microfiber, that's not the right word. That's definitely a type of clothing, but just go with me. When you do the little micro movements, we'll call it that, side to side, I'll figure it out, on the big roller, you can actually dig in and do it yourself with this. So this is a great travel tool. Again, not necessary, but one of my favorites. Finally, and I did not know this was gonna be a favorite of mine. I found this at like TJ Maxx or something one time and I bought it. Can you help pull your pants up? Yeah, girl, I got you. All right. So this thing. Now, I was dealing with plantar fasciitis for a while, so doing a lot of rolling um, on my foot. And this little thing, I don't know if you can see, like, all the little nubby parts, and they're hard. You can actually put this down and stand on it and kind of move and groove around and into all the little parts of your foot. This has been one of my favorite um, self-myofascial release tools out there and it's so weird and random and I don't even know where to buy it. Um, it says balance collection. I don't know. Maybe you can find it. Anyway, it's really cool. All right. So let's get down to business to defeat my muscles. Okay. We'll do it. Okay. Apologies. You're not going to see my face at first because I'm going to talk about this little tiny ball in the bottoms of your feet. So nice and easy. This is something that you can do. You'll have it under your heel this side, as you can see, under your heel, if I'm going back, and you can push down as much or as little as you want, it's a beautiful thing about feet, and then you'll go up, don't forget to get your arch, the ball of your foot, and even your little toesies, right, you can do long rolls, middle, inside, and outside of the foot, long rolls, and then, so this is what we're talking about, those little tiny like, micro movements. You're gonna find a place where it's probably a little bit more sore than others, hang out, put a little more pressure, I know it's not what you wanna do, and then just kind of shift side to side. So you'll feel where we're taking the little fibers of the muscles and kind of shifting them, for lack of a better explanation, shifting them around a little bit and releasing things like knots. If you've ever had a massage, you've probably had people do this to you where they hang out in one area, and kind of slowly rub that one little place, and it does, it feels better, right? So that's how you can do the foot with the ball. Now let's stick with the ball, and let's talk about the Achilles complex. So this back part of the leg. You can just take the ball and lean back a little bit. Let me get what you guys can see. Lean back a little bit and roll side to side up and down, find that spot where it really needs to be, hang out, make sure you turn the hip in and out. Okay, hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay, good, she's got her pants mostly up. There. She's going over and over this tiny little toilet she found. So you can use this, and when I mean Achilles complex, I'm talking about everything from the calf muscle down to the heel. This is a lot of fascia. There's a lot of connective tissue going on here. So we need to roll this out. Now, yes, this works well. You can also just kind of push it in, just kind of like when we talked about having the other tool and roll it around. But so far, we're going from bottom to top here. We've done the bottom of our foot. We've done the Achilles complex. Now, let me show you. You can also do this Achilles complex on the big roller. And I'm only gonna be demonstrating with these two, the little ball and the big roller, because that's, you know, if you have that, you can do all. So side to side, big long rolls side to side, cross the leg over for more, side to side, rolls. Okay, and that can, that can be a lot. Can we take it off now? Yeah. Okay, you're being so patient. Thank you, Coach Gary. Here we go. All right, Achilles complex. Next up would be our tibialis anterior on the front and our calf muscle on the back. Now, now that we're getting into bigger muscles, that have some blood flow. Let me tell you about how veins work. So veins have these little valves in them that help shunt the blood up to the heart, right? So you would imagine these valves would go kind of this way up toward our heart. 
so toward the the meat of our body right like that torso um so when you do heavy pressing down long rolls you want to put more pressure on as you go up and a little less on the way down okay that's not super important until we get into areas where we might have a propensity to build varicose veins um, you don't really want to roll over any protruding veins like the big uh, the varicose veins that kind of protrude a little bit you don't want to do foam rolling over that you want to take care of your vein health but we can start before we have anything going on by rolling up with a heavier um, pressure so let's talk about how we get into our calf now calf is going to require a little bit of upper body strength friends <laughs> we're going to roll up and down just like we've been doing now here's the hard part because we want to like push with this foot and get barely any weight we have to really push let this leg relax onto the roller and go through those long rolls and then we also roll to get to the outside of our calf and the inside of our calf now as you're rolling you're gonna be like oh wow that place that kind of lights up a little bit if that's the place hang out Put some extra pressure down and just roll a little bit side to side over that calf. Let that body shift. Ooh, I'm telling you, I think I sweat more doing foam rolling than I do anything else because it's like that, I don't want to say pain level, but there is, it's a discomfort, just like if you were getting a deep tissue massage, that kind of stimulates that circulation. Well, you are stimulating circulation. All right, foot, Achilles, calf, tibialis anterior is next so to do this you have two options um we can also roll the calf with both legs on as well i like the single leg on calf so tibialis anterior we're going to start over here at the ankle and we're not going to roll over any joints right we're just not going to roll over any joints and i'm kind of in all fours here so right like knees knees hands hands down to the elbows and then i can roll out and in the tibialis anterior. I can go a little internally rotated. I can go a little externally rotated. I can find that spot that's driving me crazy. Yeah, that's a circle. Thanks for bringing that. And then I can go side to side or a little up and down, right? Those little micro movements. Now, here's something fun if you want to roll both at the same time, right? We can get a little core engagement by pulling in. Let me go back a little bit. Start closer to the knees in this case. In and out. Or piking up. Oop. I can't really pike up. My toes are running the ground. But it usually works okay. So there you go. Options for tibialis anterior. You found a square and a circle. Lower leg done. Foot, Achilles, calf, tibialis anterior. So if you're not, if you don't have a ton of time to do rolling, then maybe you do this one day. And then you'll do the upper leg the next day so let's talk about upper leg you found another circle how do you have two yeah you're like 10. all right so let's talk um quads and vastus medialis first so for our quads Trying to figure out the best angle for these kind of a funky video so again you can do both legs at once kind of like we did tibialis anterior, but we're gonna go from here down. But quads for me are a beast. Like this is where I hold a lot of tension. You're doing so good with your puzzle. So I'm gonna do one leg at a time. So here we go. I've said so a lot, I realize that. I don't wanna lay all the way down like that, I don't. I wanna put it on close to my um, knee actually to start. And then you're gonna roll long rolls down your quadriceps. And again, quad means four. There's four muscles going on here. So maybe we roll a little bit toward the outside, a little bit toward the inside, not a ton, because we're gonna get that inner thigh in a second. And then you find that place that really lights up or places. You might have to do this in a couple different places. And you just rock that leg side to side. Whew. Quads are a beast. Now, to get the vastus medialis, so we're really concentrating on like right here, not groin, 
but right here, here's my knee. Um, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to straighten this out. We're going to bring it right to the inside of that leg and maybe a couple little rolls just to find the spot, usually closer to the knee. Yeah, then we lift, lower, lift, lower, lift, and lower. This is a really great one for runners, walkers, uh, triathletes, people doing things in a straight line on their feet. Cyclist. Cool. All right, now, it has been um, kind of debated about rolling out the iliotibial band, IT band, the outside of the leg. So for now, and I mean for, for whenever, it's not like it's gonna change that much, but it's probably the better technique for the majority of people, we'll put it that way. We're actually gonna focus on up here by the hip, it's the tensor fasciolata, or late, I don't know if people say it differently, but um, we're going to roll this area, not all the way down to our knee. To do that, you would just kind of side saddle it on, get up here by the hip, and then roll a little bit forward and a little bit backward. And I'm telling you, friend, you will know when you are in the right area without a doubt. You will know. Cool? <laughs> all right, let's shift up, stay in that side position, now we're gonna bend both legs. Actually, this works okay, but I'm gonna do it differently. So you're in the side position. Scratch it, I'm gonna start you from a different position because it gets too awkward to explain. Um, I don't wanna make it where you have to go from one to the next one. I wanna make them easily accessible. So let's do hamstrings. Whew. A good place to focus hamstrings is kind of like this little crease where your buttocks meet your, the back of your thighs. And you can just get back here. You can do one or two. My hamstrings don't usually light up as much. Um, I'm just talking backwards, right? So you can just do both hamstrings at one time. Why is that feeling really weird? What do I normally do? Maybe I normally do one at a time. Yeah, I think I do. I do. I totally do. <laughs> That's what's funny. I'm like, wait a second. That feels so wrong. So then again, nice long hamstring release. Find the spot where it bothers you a little bit. Go a little bit side to side. Cool? Okay, we've done. Quads. Inner, outer. So inner is going to be that VM down here closer to the knee. Outer is up here, TFL by the hip. Hamstrings. Front, back, side, side. Now we got to do the booty. Okay? The booty. What? What? Hold on. What do I need to get? Oh, got it. All right. Here we go. Glute max and glute med. The big booty muscle is the glute max. Glute med is a little bit further inside and then even deeper is the piriformis. We're gonna be getting into all of those. So sitting on the roller, just like you normally would. But we sit on rollers all the time. It is really nice for the posture. One hand back, shift the knees to the side and then do a nice big roll over that glute max. Okay, you're doing like one butt cheek at a time. So again, you can split this up. Let's see, say one day you do the lower leg, one day you do the upper leg, one day you do um, booty, and then we'll do an upper, we'll say booty and back, and then we'll do an upper body little thing too. So here's how we get deeper into that for glute meat and piriformis. This leg does a little crossover Support again, lean to the side, do another roll. All of a sudden, there's like these new little muscles, especially as you come up to the top of the roll, that you find. Now here, we generally stay with these nice long rolls for a while. We're not too concerned with putting pressure up toward our heart because we're doing muscles that move in a variety of directions. But we can still do that cross fibering if we find, cross fibering, I knew I would remember, if we found a place. Awesome? So awesome. So booty, I said booty and back. So with the foam roller, we can kind of do these long rolls, very slow and controlled, up and down the spine, 
And then I like to do, I'm gonna go sideways for this. I like to do some supported little yoga stretches. So we have a natural curve in our lower back and I like to do a supported back bend. This is a really high roller. So sometimes you can do this with a, um, a towel. That feels nice. Also underneath our shoulders and then just reaching back to open the chest here. That feels nice. Um, and then a third one, which would be what I was talking about earlier, where you would fit your body, I don't want to crash and burn, especially not on camera, and lay back, lay back, lay back, lay back. We're here, our head, everything is supported, and our arms open out to the side for chest expansion. Yeah. Now, okay, these last three are kind of more of a stretchy thing, so I wouldn't do the back extensions and this one before an activity, I'll do them after, but they're so good on the foam roller that I will be remiss if I let you go without this. And then finally, the last, of course, after activity, upper body thing, would be coming to the end and letting the head hang off and getting that little natural cervical curve. That, what is that? That is, I don't know, it's like a transformer maybe? So maybe we do that another day, <laughs> those three, where we do the upper body release, or the upper body stretching. Now back to this little ball, this is a great one to use under the shoulder blade. So this is always so awkward, I can't even imagine how it's going to look on camera. So we're going to play with this all together. So you're going to get it underneath the shoulder, you can do this on the wall too, but ground works nice because it doesn't go, yeah there we go. So it's underneath the shoulder blade. And then you can roll up and down. The spiky ball, not my favorite for this. I feel like I'm like jabbing this into my the back of my ribs. But find those spots, roll up and down, especially behind the shoulder blade. Maybe forward and back a little bit if it's not spiky and feeling like it's going through your skin. So you can use it underneath your shoulder blade. And then you can also use the ball on, if you want, some extra pressure underneath like in that glute, if there's a spot you need to find and get some really, really specific, um, like a specific point, those are cars, then you can use it under your glute too. Kind of the same concept, rolling sideways on there. Man, the spiky one, not recommended for anything but the foot. I'm just gonna go out there and limit and say that because that's been really painful. Another upper body thing you can do with this ball, take it, come across as if you're like just Saying the Pledge of Allegiance is about the right spot. Use your other hand to push in a little bit. Do some rotations. Move a little bit down, a little bit up. You'll be surprised how tight the chest muscles are. Last one. <laughs> like, is it the last one? It is the last one. There's so much you can do with this, but we're going to stop after this one. Is um, lats. So these long muscles down the side of our body. You can actually go on to these with the foam roller, ooh, mine are tight, hello lats. And you can find a spot, kind of go up and down. And again, it takes a little bit of finagling, but I, I found where my spot is. And then a little roll forward and back, forward and back. You can also take this bottom arm under, like you're stretching the shoulder, and get that shoulder blade out of the way and do a little bit more work. And it's very hard to talk through this because it's feels great. <laughs> so that's it. Um, little recap. We have the lower body under the foot, Achilles, um, tibialis anterior, and calf. I'll point to these as I go. Oh, how about that? Be good anatomy lesson. Bottom of the foot, Achilles complex, calf, tibialis anterior. Upper leg, quadriceps, vastus medialis down here by the knee, TFL on the outside, hamstring, glute max with the glute need slash piriformis engagement. Upper body, we did stretching for our back, stretching for our back and neck, especially with curves and chest on the foam roller. Then we did some foam rolling for our shoulder blade, our chest, and our lats. I think that was it.